God damn it, Jenna. Okay, we're gonna have to do this because you don't want to read. All right. I'm trying to educate you, Jenna. And and yeah, I did record this earlier all on mute. That was the divine saying, don't call her a cunt this time, Auntie Jessie. And so I am listening to my good spirits. And we're going to read this together because I think perhaps maybe you have a comprehension problem. I can help you though. All right, let's do this together. I speak as a Reiki master. Um, who also donates a good portion of my proceeds from my Reiki healing to the Japanese American National Museum. Consider learning something by going there sometime. But for just, just for this next couple of minutes, can you fucking listen to what I'm reading out loud for you here? Okay. Uh, this comes from positiveforcemovement.org. Okay, it was written by a non-binary person named Lore McSpadden Walker. Okay, let's fucking go. All right, learn something here, please. I'm trying to save you from being canceled, but you've also got a lot of shit that you're going to get canceled over. I just wanted to help you out on this one thing, but you know, you're on your own now. Good luck. Now, this article, let's read it together. My previous post about cultural appropriation and spiritual practices has been getting a lot of hits recently, especially in regards to search terms related to cultural appropriation and Reiki. You ready? As a result, I wanted to expand upon what I wrote with a particular focus on cultural appropriation within the practice of Reiki. While Reiki is not a closed practice, there is a great deal of cultural erasure and white supremacy that had a harmful and disrespectful and colonizing impact on Reiki and its roots and the harms need to be acknowledged and rectified through knowledge and action. Note, uh, a closed practice is one for which there are boundaries that state that the practices can only be practiced by people who are descendants of a cultural heritage. Examples like Santeria, Vadu, Kobala, Shamanism, and practices such as smudging, right? We don't call it smudging if we're white folks, we call it smoke cleansing. And sometimes you can use smoke cleansing as an excuse for shit, okay? Like, I didn't burn dinner, I was smoke cleansing the kitchen with the pork chops. White people shit, bro. Let's move on. Some, but not all, closed practices also make space for people from different cultural heritages to be initiated into them. I have been initiated into the Reiki. You have not. I have taken time to learn some things about the Japanese ancestors who brought this wonderful, wonderful concept to us and gave us teachings that you have not even remotely tried to learn. Let's, let's, let's see why you're, why you're getting canceled, okay? Let's 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 figure it out, cause maybe just maybe you'll fucking turn this shit around and not double down again, triple down, quadruple down. At the onset, I want to make a specific point of elevating the work and words of Japanese Reiki teachers. If you are a person with an interest in Reiki whose cultural and ancestral background is not Japanese, I implore you to first read and reflect on these books and articles. And then there is a fantastic list of wonderful books and things that you should learn about. In fact, you know, you're not much of a reader. That's okay, because there are podcasts that talk about it. Okay, you cannot get certified through a podcast, probably. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not the guy that makes that decision. But you could probably at least learn a fucking thing or two, and you should. Because you're really, really being a dick right now. Okay? All right? I'm trying to help you. But you're, you're a dick. But I didn't call you a cunt this time, so... For those who don't know, Sensei 
Hawaio Takata, who was born in 1900 and died in 1980, was integral in bringing Reiki trainings to the United States. She was a student of Churihuro Hayashi, who was one of the students of Mikao Usai, who is credited as being the first teacher of Reiki. See, Reiki, Reiki practitioners can trace their lineage. They go by, who was your teacher? Who was their teacher? Who was their teacher? And everything should lead back to Usai. Do you lead back to Usai? You don't. It's not like you can't do it, but, you know, between you and me, I'd lay low for a little while, all right? I wouldn't go trying to pick up no Reiki certificates right now. You kind of fucked things up a lot. You ever wonder if maybe this is why you're down on your luck? Maybe something you're doing isn't working and you refuse to acknowledge it. It's okay. We've all been there. We've all been a fucking wreck. By the way, stay the hell away from that guy out there in Phoenix who talks about Paul Walker teaching him to walk after a skateboarding accident. It, he, that man is a disaster. Just stay away. But listen. Here we go. Reiki Ryoho Reiken Tonetsu Ryoho Shin Senshinyu Reiki Ryoho and Sedo Reishodutsu are all practices, all approaches to Reiki that predate Roshi Makao Usai's formulation of Usai Reiki Ryoho. Now, Reiki. And those are some beautiful symbols that, again, I don't have Japanese heritage. I'm doing the best I can with pronunciations. I'm being as respectful as I can. Right? Reiki is translated in a variety of ways, some more literal than others. Transla translations that are frequently given are universal energy, Invisible unseen energy, healing power energy, and universal life force. Most troubling are the multiple Reiki manuals in the English language that do not provide a translation for Reiki at all. Do you see where I'm going here? Do you see how, remember I was telling you last week, hey, you can call it anything you want, just do not call it Reiki unless you have the certification. There's a fucking reason for it, bro. Okay? Um, there's a fucking reason why doctors have a lot of schooling. It's so they know what the fuck they're doing. Right? And when one doctor does something really bad, like you got like a crazy doctor that's out there just like, you know, cutting up people for, I don't know, fetish stuff. I don't know. All the other doctors are like, oh my God, that looks horrible. When you wild in like this, Jenna, you make us look horrible and it's stupid okay look we're just we're, we're dumb white bitches on the internet flipping cards for a penny okay i mean i make more than a penny i probably make more money than you do and will ever make doing what you do and you are at fault for that because you did not learn and you want to be combative with the people who are helping you to learn. Let's move on. Let's take a look at this beautiful woman right here. That's Hawaii Takata. This woman, she did something amazing. Okay? She brought Reiki to the Americas in a very, very spicy time of our history. Let's read about it, right? As is true for almost every aspect of American history, Sensei Takata's ability to bring Reiki into the United States was impacted by white supremacy. She trained under the guidance of Sensei Hayashi in Tokyo from 1935 to 1937 before returning to her birthplace of Hawaii. 
Sensei Hayashi visited her there from 1937 to 1938 towards the end of his time in Hawaii. He authorized Sensei Takata to teach Reiki through granting of her Ra Reiki Master Certificate. You see that? This is an American-born Japanese person who studied for years. Years! The aliens did not come out and teach you about Reiki, Jenna. It didn't happen. Okay? You can have your delusions. You can have your faith and your beautiful experiences. I have weird shit too. Alright? But you cannot have this one. You cannot. And it's not me that's preventing that. It's you. Of course, it wasn't long after that that before the United States, under Executive Order 9066, began incarcerating Japanese individuals within concentration camps in California, Arizona, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, and Arkansas. These are typically referred to as internment camps, but such a euphemism downplays the reality of what was actually happening. Oh boy, does it! That Japanese American National Museum, you know, let, let's let's just let's just go ahead and pull up a little picture here for you, okay? Uh, let's see, um, Japanese American National Museum uh, interment. Uh, here we go. We should have some wonderful pictures here. Um, ah, yes, perfect. So. If you go to the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles, you will actually get to see a reconstructed, rebuilt. This is what people were fucking living in. This. Do you see this? This is reconstructed. This is at the museum. They want you to start in the museum on the second floor because that's where this exhibit is. Japanese families were shoved into this. Could you imagine? Oh, actually, you know, you may enjoy being given a place to stay. However, this is not the same. This is not somebody who is not wanting to get a job. This is somebody who was judged and deemed dangerous simply because of their heritage. You are dangerous. The things you are doing are really offensive. And I tried to help you. You want to learn some more? Would you like to learn some more about, you know, this 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 incredible fucking time in in American history where we were like, "Hey, yeah, no, this is fine. You're Japanese, get in here." Remember that? Oh no, you wouldn't remember it. Have you ever read anything about that? Probably not. Let me continue to educate you a little bit. It was in this context that Sensei Takata was attempting to share the wisdom and practice of Reiki with her American students. It is therefore not surprising that much of the Japanese culture, history, and traditions from which the practice of Reiki arose were minimized in order to make the teachings more palatable to the wealthy, usually white students, who could afford to attend her classes. <clears throat> Put succinctly, the racism, xenophobia, and anti-Japanese bigotry that came to a peak during World War II laid the foundation for the whitewashed and appropriated version of Reiki that is so, so common today. Like with people like you. The result is that it is imperative for non-Japanese folks who practice Reiki. Me, I'm a Reiki master. I did it. I went through the thing. I did the shit. Okay. They receive, or if you receive Reiki treatments or study Reiki to have a deep and intentional understanding of the culture, try it sometime. Traditions and history of Reiki 
To do otherwise is to be complicit in the ways that white supremacy has impacted the teaching and the practice of Reiki in the West and to take part in the erasure of the Japanese roots of this powerful healing practice. Did you get that? Did you get that? You don't understand what the word Reiki means. You don't understand the power that is behind it. This is like granting yourself a black belt, which I've only seen one guy do on the internet. And that guy, he's not a real well-liked guy. And you aren't either, if you only keep going like this. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna fuck things up. Jenna, you want to fucking use your spirituality to, to, to get yourself out of your situation, go for it. Your spirituality, not others' spirituality that you have no right to. You are being a dick, okay? I did not call you a cunt. I am calling you a dick, though, because you are a dick. All right, this is a problem and you need to fucking figure this shit out real quick. Oh, you're going to be ripped apart by some people that uh, have a lot more to say than I do about this. Okay. So here are some things that are important for Reiki practitioners and people who are seeking Reiki treatments should know. Okay. Reiki has its spiritual roots in Mahayana Buddhism and Shugando, a religion that is indigenous to Japan that incorporates practices of Shintoism and Buddhism. Given the frequency with which religions that are indigenous to Asia are fetishized within the United States and Europe, it is essential that Reiki practitioners educate themselves about Shintoism, Shugando, and Buddhism. Asian spiritual practices are not an aesthetic, nor are they a part-time hobby. They are sacred, and they are a path that one walks throughout one's existence. Do you understand that? Is this very Reiki of me? You know, one of the tenets of Reiki is... To just let the anger go. You can take it and say, oh, hello, anger. Let's go. Feel your feelings and then let them go. Am I angry? Well, you know, I'm a little annoyed because I'm trying to fucking help you and you're just not fucking listening. You know, and, you, and you, you're being a dick and flipping me off and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, the ways that all too many American Reiki practitioners have completely erased Shigondo, Shintoism, and Buddhism from their practice and teachings about Reiki is not okay. Some even replace mentions of them with Christian tenets. Like when you told me earlier that Reiki comes from God. I don't think you understand the concept of what you are saying at all. But the history of this tendency originates in Sensei Takata's need to survive and to share the practice of Reiki while navigating the profound levels of anti-Japanese sentiment that permeated the United States during her lifetime. And it is the task and responsibility of Reiki practitioners to do all they can to end the ways that white supremacy have shaped the teaching and practice of Reiki within the West. Do you, do you, are you getting it yet or are you still being a dick? Well, it, is it possible to be a Christian and have a Reiki practice? Yeah, especially since Shigondo, Shintoism and Buddhism are not contradictory with Christianity. Is it possible to respectfully practice Reiki while estranging it from Shigundo, Buddhism, and Shintoism? Absolutely motherfucking not, bro. Okay. Support, elevate, and learn from Japanese Reiki practitioners and teachers. 
if you received your Reiki instruction from white practitioners who didn't have in-depth understanding of Shigondo, Shintoism, Buddhism, and or the history and traditions of Reiki, you are not alone. I confess that I was, uh, that this was true for me, too, at the start of my path towards becoming a Reiki master. The degree to which Reiki teaching and practice in the United States has been capitalized on and taken over by white practitioners who do not honor its cultural context is overwhelming in its scope. So here are some things that you could do. Shut the fuck up, Jenna. Shut the... Jenna. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. But also... If you have not yet received instruction about Reiki, seek out Japanese Reiki teachers. I am not a teacher. I am a master, but I am not a teacher. Because I'm not Japanese and I don't think that uh, that's my place. Okay? You know? You know what I'm saying? I could, but I choose to not. Because it doesn't feel like it vibes with my soul. You know what I'm saying? But you should consider reaching out to Japanese Reiki teachers and enroll in their courses and support their offerings. Give money to a Japanese person before you go and try to make money off of something that their ancestors lovingly created and took a huge fucking risk. You fucking hearing this shit here? This woman this 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 wonderful woman back up here okay this woman sensei takata had to do a lot in order to survive the time that she was here she was seen as the enemy and here she is trying to bring you loving peace but it's not jesus peace so it's evil no 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 no, no. jesus can help you too right Okay, she had to flavor it so that we would handle it. That is to say she took out a bunch of spices because we're white people and we need to eat things that are no spicier than mayonnaise at any given time. But she did it for us. She did it. And you're disrespecting everything that she had to go through and her family and her fucking heritage, her fucking everybody in her country, in our country. Bro. I'm trying to help your ass. Okay? So, let's learn some other things you could potentially do here. <sighs> if you have received Reiki instruction and attunements, but have recognized that the instruction that you received was lacking in cultural context and reverence for Reiki's traditions, Seek out this information and be rigorous, humble, and intentional as you learn. Consider donating the amount you spent for your Reiki instruction and attunements to a Japanese Reiki teacher and or paying for a culturally and or ancestrally Japanese person to attend a Reiki course. You know, yeah, even it out a little bit there, you know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, we're also elevating Marika ha Ham uh, Hata Seto Climber um, and their Patreon at the Hara Circle. They provide incredible um, information and wisdom about decolonizing Reiki. If you are a Reiki master who offers courses and attunements, not courses, but attunements. So these are some things that I need to keep in mind because I'm also a dumb white bitch, right? If you are not culturally and or ancestrally Japanese and or you do not have a sustained Buddhist or Shinto practice that is guided by a teacher with a Japanese lineage, consider whether or not you are indeed qualified to teach Reiki. Teach Reiki. Practice Reiki, I can do. I cannot teach Reiki. I can't teach you any of this because you are pretty unwilling to learn but furthermore um you know this tells you to consider having if you are going to be a teacher to get somebody with the correct heritage to 
work alongside you so that you are guided by a teacher from a place that connects to what you're trying to teach, right? If someone who is culturally and or ancestrally Japanese desires to take a class with you, recognize that this can be a step for them towards reclaiming a culture and practice that has stolen from them, been stolen from them, through decades of appropriation, discrimination, and the demands of the white supremacist America that immigrants assimilate. It is unethical to charge someone to learn about a cultural tradition that was stolen from them. Consider offering your services to them for free and or connecting them with a Reiki practitioner who is culturally and or ancestrally Japanese. I don't charge my clients that have Japanese heritage. If they cannot find somebody who is more apt to work with them because they are elevated people, uh, and I'm, I'm just a dumb white bitch, I'm Reiki certified, I'm very good, I do what I do, but I am also really fucking respectful. I also donate a large amount of my proceeds from Reiki to the Japanese American National Museum. Hey! Look at that, giving back and stuff, right? It's an energy exchange, right? Are you getting it, Jenna? Listen. Donate a significant portion of or all of your proceeds from Reiki treatments, attunements, and practices to AAPI serving organizations and directly to AAPI individuals. This concrete energetic extension of tangible gratitude should not be optional. Uh, question the aspects of Reiki practice that endorse gatekeeping. Okay, we're not gatekeeping you. I'm not trying to keep you from doing Reiki. I am trying to keep you from doing something that you think is Reiki something that you are inappropriately calling Reiki and you're being a dick about it, right? Okay, so here, here, okay. Um, particularly in areas of where profit and education are involved, Reiki by definition is universal. This isn't gatekeeping. This isn't me gatekeeping you. This is me reeling your ass back in. Okay? Because you're, you're wildin', Jenna. Challenge the ways that the practice and tradition of Reiki have been blended together with the practices and traditions of non-Japanese faiths, particularly those faiths that are fetishized and aestheticized by white Westerners. Prime example is discussions of chakras. Oh my goodness, the chakras. Remember that? Yeah, let's talk about that for a fucking hot minute. Uh, chakras in relation to the practice of Reiki. So chakra is a Sanskrit word, which means wheel or cycle. Chakras are a component of the practice, culture, and traditions of Hinduism. Hinduism. And denote the wheels of energy through which energy moves throughout a living system, some of the earliest known written references to chakras occur within the Hindu Vedas. The understanding of chakras has been simplified, minimized, and erased in its reduction to the seven chakras that most white people in America know about. Namaste, right? Namaste the fuck out of that, all right? Because listen, another example is sacred geometry of crystal grids, which arose from Egyptian, Kemetic, and Mesopotamian indigenous practices. Americans, and in particular white Americans, have a tendency to clump the traditions, cultures, and practices of other parts of the world into one undifferentiated file that they label other. Hinduism and Kemetism are sacred religions that are deserving of respect. They are also distinct from the indigenous faiths of Japan. 
it does a disservice to Hinduism, Kemetism, Shintoism, Buddhism, and Shigundo to reduce them in such a manner. Recognize that Reiki is not the only form of energy work and energy healing. Do you hear that, Jenna? I fucking told you this. If you are aware of your ancestral heritage, educate yourself about the mystic practices and healing techniques and approaches to energy work that existed within your pre-colonization bloodline. Bro, we may not have the coolest sounding shit, but also European magic and lore is very rich. We got the Vikings, we got the fucking fairies. We got all kinds of fucking cool shit. Ireland, all that fucking Celtic shit. Bro, you've got a lot to choose from. You don't need to take from some place that you did not come from. Let them have what resources they have. Let them have what is making them special. Okay? And that means... That when the dumb white bitch on the internet over here, this bitch right here, comes at you and says, Hey, I know something that you are doing and you are maybe not trying to hurt anybody, but I'm educating you that this is not okay. But instead, you just want to fight. So, you know. Um, remember that you should probably check yourself before you riggedy wreck yourself but you seem to be incapable of that but in conclusion the fact that reiki is an open practice does not mean that it is a cultural blank slate that can be adapted to one's own whims and familiarities cultural appropriation of reiki is fucking real it is frequent and it is harmful okay it's not inevitable. Decolonization of Reiki is possible. And it begins with your commitment to unlearn colonized understandings and sacred practice.